Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with another Cinema 4D tutorial about how to use the motion tracker and all the motion tracking tools in Cinema 4D. So there's some updates to the motion tracking system in R17 and the motion tracker was completely new to R16 in 2014. So if you're new to motion tracking in Cinema 4D or if you just want to check out some of the new features in R17 for motion tracking, this will be a great way to get into motion tracking your live action footage in Cinema 4D. Let's dive into C4D and we'll take a look at what I'm talking about. So here we are in Cinema 4D R17 and we got some little 3D objects tracked onto these cement blocks in this live action footage. You can see they're following along and if we pop out of our camera view, we can see our 3D scene reconstructed. So let's get started on building this from scratch and we'll go over how to do motion tracking in Cinema 4D as well as some of the new features in R17. So I'll just make a new file and quickly get this set up for HD resolution because I know that's what my footage is and I'll just pop on ambient occlusion for later. So how I want to start motion tracking in Cinema 4D is I'm going to go to motion tracker and click motion tracker and that's going to drop in this motion tracker object. And what I want to do is grab some footage. So I'll go to footage, click and load that and I'll find some footage and I got this short little shot by some railroad tracks near the West Loop of Chicago. Some pretty cool little dystopian future stuff that's in the middle of the city for some reason. So I'll load that in and that's gonna load in my footage and I'm gonna have my motion tracker options. What I wanna do since I have HD footage is resample this to 100%. And then if I go to 2D tracking, I could add more tracks. So I'll do 1500 and up the spacing to 35 so we'll get more information. And if I just want to see how this goes on automatic, I can click auto track and it's going to run through that and auto track and we can see how it's going down here. And then it's going to process those frames. And once it's finished through the mastery of video editing, we can cut ahead and see that we got our full track with our points following along this object. Now new to R17, if we go to motion tracker, motion tracker graph view, this will show us a representation of all those track points. And if I press O on this, it's gonna show me all of those. And I can hold the one and two keys or the middle mouse button to pan up and around and scale this in and out. Now they're all green, it looks pretty good. But if we zoom in here, we can see we got some ones with red and that means they're not good track data, as well as some up here towards the top that don't really stay in for very long. So what we could do is delete these by just clicking and grabbing or doing a shift click to grab non-sequential ones. And I can delete those two. And I could do the same thing if I didn't want to use some of these ones like this one. If we zoom in, it's only there for a little bit. We can delete those. And if we want to check this out a different way, we can go to our graph mode. And this is a graph view of our track points. And we can see that over time, some of them come in and out. So if we grab any of these that kind of just disappear, we can see them highlighted in our scene and we could just delete those. Additionally, if we go to our 2D tracking options, we can turn on error threshold. And then if we drag this down, we can cut out ones that aren't there long enough. And then if we go to graph view, we can see how that's looking. So the new updates to R17 in this motion tracker graph view, let you really control and edit your track points a bit more. And then I can close that out. And then what I want to do is go to reconstruction and I'll run this 3D solver. And we can see that's going to run down here and just take a minute depending on how long your footage is. And once it's done, it's going to add these objects. And we can see there's these nulls containing all our track points and a solved camera that we can see is moving along like our real camera. And we can pop into that and there's our scene. We can see it's all tracking nicely. Now what we want to do is orient our scene because we can see the grid's just kind of straight as it would be. So we want to go to this motion tracker and add a couple of tags wherever we want our ground plane to be. In this case, I want it over here. We could put it on any of these boxes as long as we have enough points, but this will be a good little example of a flat ground plane to lock some things onto. And to do that, I want to right click and add a motion tracker tag for planar constraints. And I'm going to scrub through to where there's track points on this block where I want the orientation of my 3D scene to be. And I'm going to drag this to three of those points that represent that surface. 
and I wanna change the axis on this to Y, and that's gonna point in the right direction. And then I wanna add one more tag for motion tracking tags, position, and drop this into one of the points on my surface. And then if I click off, you can see that our 3D grid is oriented towards the top of that block. So now if I start adding objects, they're gonna drop onto that block and be oriented in the correct way. So if I grabbed a little cube and a tiny little sphere and a small little cylinder, if you wanna composite these on this block, now they're gonna lock along to that. And if we do a quick area render, it doesn't look right at all. So to get this to actually be showing up on this footage, we just need to do a couple of things. What we need to do is create a background. And for the background, I'm gonna create a new material down here. And on the color, I'm gonna load that same footage, check off reflectance, drag that to our background. So then when we render, we'll see that footage. And to get our shadows, we wanna create a plane. And since we set up our scene, it's gonna lock onto that ground plane correctly. I'll just put our objects on top of that. And then on our plane, we wanna duplicate that same footage material. We can do that by holding command and dragging up and make sure our projection is frontal. And to get it to be transparent, we can right click and go to Cinema 4D Tags Compositing and check on Composite Background. And that's gonna let that pass through. But now if we go to our render settings and turn on ambient occlusion, you'll see we'll start to get those shadows and then if we add lights to our scene to get everything to be set up and then add shadows to those, we can match the lighting and get those shadows to fall in the correct place. So it'd probably be somewhere around here in our scene. If we take a look at these shadows as a reference and we could also do things like add a physical sky and only use the sun. And then we're gonna get our objects locking on. We just wanna take a bit more time to actually add accurate lighting and materials, but that'll get our track working. And one other new little feature on the motion tracker in R17 is this ability to account for lens distortion by adding a lens profile. And if you wanna learn more about that, you can check out the other part of this tutorial that goes over the new lens distortion option in R17. And if you wanna learn about a lot of other updates to R17 and motion tracking in Cinema 4D, you can check out some of my other videos where I cover 3D compositing, motion tracking, and new features in Cinema 4D and get a lot of additional tips on 3D animation in Cinema 4D and After Effects as well as topics in the VFX industry and compositing. And if you have questions on this tutorial or any of mine, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and you can hashtag those motion tracking. And be sure to subscribe to the channel to get weekly videos and updates at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.